On today's episode, I'll show you how I made this. A 3D printed spray can holder. I found it on a Thingiverse and then improved it in Tinkercad. I'll show you how I did it on today's Filament Friday. Here's the original spray can holder design that I found on Thingiverse from user Most Lighting. So I printed a set straight from the Thingiverse files. But there's a few things I just don't like. One of them is the way these hook together. They're designed to lock together. The problem is they really don't fit. When I finally did force one to fit, it stretched the plastic that it wants to break. So I think they designed these one to one and didn't allow for any clearance. You know, you need clearance because the plastic will expand a little bit, just the ribbing of the plastic from the layers. You need to allow for expansion and allow a gap. So that needs to be changed. Another thing I didn't like is these are slots for the screws. And I didn't realize, but the, the thing can pop out from the, the screws. I'd rather have a full circle to hold it in place. So I can fix that as well. And then the hooks themselves, I actually found out they're slightly big for the cans I'm going to be using. So I need to shrink this down a little bit. So I need to make those three changes, and I did do that in Tinkercad. Let me show you how I did it. The first step was to import the original .stl file. So I imported it at 100% and then once I had it I wanted to make a duplicate because I wanted to see how these fit together. So here's a second one. I lined it up and you can see there's no gaps on the side. There's a gap on the top but not on the side and that's why these things fit so tight. So what I wanted to do is just get the top section of one of these hooks. So I brought in a block, made it into a hole, lined it up with the top edge and then just increase this size to take away all the hook except that top little trapezoidal piece and once these are grouped together there it is now I can come in here and make that piece a little bit bigger and then turn it into a hole so to take away material then bring the hook back in take that piece put it where the slot is but because this is slightly bigger it's going to take away material on the sides and therefore allow me to have a gap for when these two come together so I'll just group those together, and there we have it. That's how I made it bigger. Quick and easy. So now let me duplicate this, and let's see how they look now. So I'll drop the second piece down in, and I will zoom in, and you can easily see there's a gap all the way around this thing now. So this should, this should work good. So now I needed to make this hook a little bit smaller to fit the cans, and I knew roughly I wanted it uh, 73 millimeters across uh, so that's what I did I just resized it turned out I did that perfect you'll see um, and then finally to make the holes I needed to make that wall taller so I could put a hole in it and get rid of the uh, the u-shaped slots so I just shrunk the block down and it stretched out so it lined up with that wall made it into a hole it makes it easier to see because I'll make it solid in the end but it's easier to do this with a hole so I can see where I'm at I dropped it down so it's just tall enough and then brought a cylinder in by placing the work plane on that wall so the cylinder is on its side and then I reshaped the cylinder to five millimeters in diameter put it in position in the same spot where the slot is and then turn that into a hole it looks good it's centered to the slot so I'll slide it in a little bit and then I'm gonna duplicate this hold the shift key and slide a second one down line that up with the slot and then make the wall back into a solid and we're ready to oh look there's this wall expanded I don't know how I did that so I need to shrink this wall to the side a little bit and put it back to where it was and then okay that's back so now I can just group all this together and there's my new bracket now I just need to download the .stl file but first I'm gonna rename it from their swanky Amir name and just call it uh, can hook and then click on export uh, as .stl file that's ready to send to the slicer. I imported the .stl file into Simplify 3D and this is how I'll slice it. Then I use the duplication tool to make three more. Now I'm going to position these so they're as close to the center of the bed as possible on my FlashForge Dreamer. That way I get less chance of warpage if I can keep them close to the center of the heat. I'll use the rotation tool here to rotate two of them 90 degrees and that way I can fit these together a little tighter and I'll use the move tool to move them in and like I said it's this closer to the center the better it is 
Now I'm also going to use a brim and I'll show that in the settings next. So I'll click on edit uh, settings and I chose the FlashForge Dreamer profile. Layer height is 0.3 for top and bottom layers and for perimeter shells. I'm going to use a skirt and brim. As you see here, these are the settings. Infill, like I said, 50%. No support. Temperature, 225 degrees, 90 degrees on the bed. No cooling, not for ABS. You don't want cooling. I'm going to print at 60 millimeters per second, and this thing's ready to prepare to print. So it sliced it, and you can see the brim there in purple. This looks pretty good, so it's ready to send to the printer. So I printed a set on my FlashForge Dreamer, and they came out really good. I didn't get any warping or splitting. And this is ABS, but I like to squish that first layer down, and that's what helps prevent the, the warping, which typically you get with ABS. And then I use this. It's a deburring tool, but I actually call it a finishing tool because that's what I do. And it's got a nice pivoting blade, and it's not super sharp like a uh, X-Acto blade. I mean, if you rub your finger on it enough, you can cut it, but I'm safe pulling it towards me. And then a pivot, so I can get rounded edges like this and just take that bottom layer right off. So I printed with a brim, broke that off, and then just ran this tool along along the edge, and it just cleans that right up. So I do sell these on my website. You can find them pretty much anywhere. Uh, I sell them to support the channel, so if you're interested, there's a link in the description below. But this is a great tool to have with your 3D printer. So once I got that all cleaned up, then it was time to test the lock. And beautiful. It fit right in, nice and tight. I can hear it kind of clicking as the ribs rub against each other. So that fit perfect. And then the holes, the holes themselves are nice and round so I can shoot a screw through it. And then the size, the size is perfect. Fits the can perfectly. My wife saw this. I've got a whole shelf built for her for all her paint cans because she does her crafts. And she wanted some of these close to her bench so she could keep the most common colors on the hooks. And that fits perfectly. So this is a good improvement. It was a great design, but I think I've improved it and made it even better. So the next step is to install it next to my bench. So I already mounted the first one. I got two screws going in here. Because they're locked together, I don't have to put screws here. And that's the first step. And then I needed to measure this. And I wanted this slightly on an angle so it'll slide this way and not this way. And then it can hit the edge of the, the board here. So I need to position this one up slightly from the first one and then the right width for the can. So there's the first can and then I have my penetrating oil that I use all the time and that'll go in there. And if you notice as I put this in they flex because the spacing in here is designed to accept the can but it flexes a little bit. And that stops the cans from falling out and because I printed this in ABS, it's definitely flexible. It's more flexible than PLA would be. So now all I need to do is position this so the can is slightly at an angle. And then I can shoot the screws. I'm just using a hand screwdriver. This is easy. But I'm just using some drywall screws. And these are large pitch drywall screws so they grip pretty good in the drywall here so it's got a big pitch a lot of spacing so now I want to line these guys up I'm just eyeballing it it's probably not perfect I'm not gonna I'm not gonna measure it and you can see you can see that it's going downhill like that which is what I wanted so now I can put the cans in place and I'm all set so these turned out really good. I just need to print some more and probably some different colors for my wife. And I used Solutech filament for these. I got this from Roy Olmsted, one of my Patreon supporters. He said it printed really good and he's right. I've gotten really good ABS prints out of this stuff. But you know what I like better? <laughs> Their spool design. It actually is three pieces that snap together. With a little bit of force I could pop the end off and it's great for those samples that you want to print with. So that's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing here, please check out some of my other videos. Just click on them. It'll take you right to it. If you want to help support what I'm doing, a dollar a month is all I ask. Click on the Patreon logo over here. And thank you to all my Patreon supporters who are scrolling down below. You guys make this all happen. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.